Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to add a user authentication to your Streamnet app. So only users with a valid username and password can access your app. In case of an incorrect password or username, the user will get the following error message. But once they are logged in, the authentication will be saved in a cookie. So even if I refresh the website, I do not need to re-authenticate myself. The implementation is very straightforward and takes only a couple of minutes. Ok, and without further ado, let us get started. To secure our web app, we will be using the Streamlit Authenticator library. Therefore, fire up your terminal or command prompt and type pip install streamlit authenticator. Once installed, I will create a small helper file and name it generatekey.py. Within this file, I will import pickle and path from pathlib. Those are both core Python modules, so you do not need to install them. Next, I will import Streamlit Authenticator. Ok, and with that in place, I can now create a list of my users. Let's say I have two users, Peter Parker and Rebecca Miller. I can now define for each name the respective username. So, those are the names which will be used for the authentication. In my case, I will use P. Parker and R. Miller. And Peter Parker gets the password ABC123 and Rebecca Miller will be able to use the password DEF456. As the next step, we are going to use the Hasher module to convert the plain text passwords to hashed passwords. On a side note, under the hood, Streamlit Authenticator is using Bcrypt for password hashing, which is considered a very secure algorithm. The hashed passwords will look something like this. I will take those passwords and store them in a pickle file. First, I will define the file path to that pickle file. In my case, I want to save it to the same working directory, so the parent directory of this file. Then I will open up the file in write binary mode and dump our passwords into it. Alright, and that's it. After executing the script, we will have our pickle file with our hash passwords. So, as I said, I just created this little helper script to create the pickle file. You could have done the steps also directly into your app. But in any case, you do not want to leave the plain text passwords in your app. Therefore, ensure to delete them, or in my case, I will overwrite them. Ok, and with that preparation in place, let me open up my actual Streamlit app. As before, I'm going to import the libraries. So, pickle, Pathlib and Streamlit Authenticator. Next, I will add the user authentication at the top of my script. So let me make some space here. Like in my helper file, I will insert the names and the respective usernames. Then I'm going to load our passwords. It is very similar to before, but we want to use the read binary mode and load the pickle file this time. Now that we have the names, usernames and passwords, we can create an authentication object. In addition, you will need to enter a name for the JSON web token cookie that will be stored on the client's browser and is used to re-authenticate the user without re-entering their credentials. So once the user is logged in, they can refresh the page without providing their password again. In addition, you need to write a random key that will be used to hash the cookie signature. And finally, you can also specify the number of days the cookie can be used for. If you do not want to allow a passwordless re-authentication, you could also set it to zero. In my case, I will pick 30 days. The cool thing is that the Streamlit Authenticator library already has a login form, which looks something like this. I want to get back the name, authentication status and username from the logging module. You could now provide a name for the logging form and specify where the form should be located. You can choose between the main body or sidebar. Ok, and as a last step, I can now check for the different authentication statuses. If the authentication returns false, either the username or password is incorrect. If the user did not enter anything, the authentication will be none. In that case, I will display a yellow warning box. And in case the authentication returns true, I will render my app. So let me select all my code here and indent it on one level. 
so it will be only executed if the user authentication is successful. Now, optionally, you could also insert a lockout button. It doesn't matter where you place the lockout button. In my case, I will render it at the top of my sidebar. All you need to do is to type authenticator.lockout followed by the button's name and the position. As before, you could place it in the main body or the sidebar. As you might remember, we also have access to the actual name of the user. So we could also insert a greeting by using the streamlit title element and inserting an f-string. Ok guys, and that is all there is to it. If I now refresh my web app, I will see the logging form. Let me first try to log in with an incorrect password. As expected, we will get an error message. But if I use the correct password and hit the login button, we will have access to the web app. And also at the top of the sidebar, we've got the logout button and our greeting. The neat thing is that we could now refresh the page without any re-authentication. Also, if you change something in your filters, you are still logged in. You can click the logout button to log out and then the user will see the logging form again. If you wanted to, you could also take it one step further and store the username and hash passwords in a database. In your app, you could then connect to that database to retrieve the information. If you want a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments. Overall, I think this is a great library to quickly add authentication to your web app. If you like the Streamlit Authenticator library, share some love and leave a GitHub star. You will find the link to the GitHub repo and the files from this video in the description box below. Ok guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.